Greetings, everyone. The worthy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Marty all here at Grace and Truth Fellowship on 2nd and C Street in Brawley. And today is the Sunday before Christmas. And uh, I want to say Merry Christmas to everybody, everybody, everybody out there. Merry Christmas. And I want to speak just a moment about that and uh, what that means to me this Christmas. I want you to think with me for just a moment about this Christmas. Uh, in my lifetime, I have never experienced a Christmas like this with a COVID pandemic, with people dying from COVID, economic shutdown that is going to potentially destroy our country. And now the, the, the new savior coming, the vaccine, and uh, all this taking place, all this, all this taking place. I don't remember ever in my lifetime a Christmas like this. So maybe my prayer is that this might be a big reset. Now, I know George Soros is planning a big reset. That's what all of this is about, a big reset for the worldwide reset. You push the reset button and you kind of change the way things are done so that you can hand all of these once free countries, you can uh, all wrap them up into a global community and they're ruled by a very small group of tyrants. That's the big reset in George Soros' mind. <laughs> but I'm praying that it's actually going to be a big reset for saints all over the world and that we get reset by resetting our, fo our focus and our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ who came to this planet, came to this earth to be God incarnate, to save sinners uh, like me, the likes of me, and to make them saints. And then in heaven to glorify saints like us, to make them trophies of God's grace and glory. There is nothing, friends, nothing that compares with that nothing but I just a little perspective I hope that uh, well just a little perspective because you know in our lifetime nothing like this has ever happened but you know in my parents lifetime that's a different story because they went through World War II now you say December 7th 1941 to kids today but they don't know what you're talking about now my generation does because we're baby boomers on that day December 7th, 1941, over 2,000 Americans were killed by an attack from Japan. At one time, a mortal enemy and a threat to the world, to world peace. Now there are allies. So, so how do you think it felt at Christmas in 1941 and those years ensuing, 42, 43, 45, 44, 45, those, those Christmases, you know, and trenches in Germany, freezing, cold, you know. So, see, we don't have that to compare with. Our parents do. And uh, so we've always had these, maybe these little resets ourselves. So I'm praying that this would be a big reset for us. Now, if anybody have ever seen, just a little sideline, just as free, uh, anybody's ever seen a, a picture of or a video of George Soros recently, that guy is really old. He's about to die. His telomeres on his genes are really short. He's going to die soon. And yet, besides everything that he has, he wants more and more and more and more. Even though he's, he's just, he's got one foot in the grave and he's going to die. And yet he wants more and more. That's the definition of lust. It's never satisfied, never satiated. And then what does he look, you know, when he dies, what has he got to look forward to? That poor guy. Eternity in hell without Christ, torment, suffering forever. That poor guy. He is poor indeed. Compared to any saint on the earth. He is poor. My father owns everything. 
my Father, God, the Lord Jesus Christ. He made everything. When he was here on this earth, the only, <laughs> only thing he owned was the clothes on his back. That's all he had. No home. No bed. You talk about homeless. We got a homeless problem here in Imperial County. They come to our house frequently. We got a homeless problem. The Lord Jesus Christ was willingly homeless because he made it all. It all belongs to him. Why would he cheat and, and, and scheme and lie and, and, and steal to get more and more and more? He owns it all. He owns it all already. So that is um, uh, going to be really my message for Christmas, um, this Christmas Sunday. <laughs> I want to say Merry Christmas. Anyway, let's get started because uh, 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 I want you to, I just want to uh, uh, encourage the saints, challenge the saints, and offer real life to those that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. This is so crucial and it's so eminent and it's so relevant today, Christmas time. Why do we celebrate Christmas? It's not about Santa Claus. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ coming to this earth to save sinners like me and you. So um, uh, here's an interesting fact in the Bible. We don't know when Jesus was born. It wasn't, you know, a good chance. 365 days a year, pretty good chance it wasn't December 25th. We don't know if it's December. We don't know if it's January. We don't know if it's September. We don't know when he was born. But we certainly know we do know when he died on the cross, that was Passover on the Jewish calendar. We know for certain when he rose from the grave, that was first fruits on the Jewish calendar. We know that he's coming in the clouds to take all the believers home to be with him in glory. That's Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets. It's coming shortly. And then we know that when he comes back, He's going to come on Yom Kippur, that great day of atonement. That's when he's coming back. We can be sure of this for a fact. If you simply read the Bible, you don't have to go to cemetery or a seminary to understand the Bible. Just read the Bible. Get a good Bible that you can read and understand. Start reading it. You'll be surprised what you can learn by reading the Bible. So, so this is the, the verse. Let me look back. Let me look. Let me go to Matthew, chapter uh, one, for my um, text today. Matthew chapter one, and verse, I believe it's twenty. Sorry. Matthew chapter 1, I'm going to start with, this is the story of Joseph. Luke pretty much covers the story of Mary and the angel Gabriel appearing to hear. First it appeared to her cousin, I mean Zacharias, who was married to her cousin Elizabeth, and that was the parents of John the Baptist. Then the angel Gabriel appears to Mary and talks to her, and that, that story goes on. And then you can find the lineage of Mary in the book of Luke. You find the lineage of Joseph in the book of Matthew, both sons of David, from two separate sons of David. And, uh, um, and so um, they're both from the royal line and the sons of David, just as the Lord Jesus Christ had to be from. So, but let me just break in in, in, in Joseph's story. I'm going to say uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. We'll read this quickly. It won't take long. Verse 18 in Matthew 1. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily, privately. In other words, she could have been stoned for being pregnant out of wedlock. Okay? Fat chance of that happening these days, right? Okay. 
Things have changed. Things have changed a lot, okay? Our morals have slipped. We have drifted. Unless you have a standard to go by, we don't even know how far we've drifted out on the ocean. Drift a drift on the ocean. That's what the world is, just a drift. You gotta make the rules up as you go along. Is when you when you walk away from the Bible, you gotta make up your own rules. They're all wrong. So uh, uh, let's go back. So, uh, but while, verse 20, but while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus. Yeshua, Yeshua, God saves. That's what his name means. He shall save his people from their sins. Verse 22. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet. By the way, I just want to say, you read the book of Matthew. This phrase happens more in the book of Matthew than any other New Testament gospel, um, that it might be fulfilled, that which was spoken of by the prophet. This is prophecy being fulfilled right here. Did you know that in the Quran, there's not one word of prophecy? In the Book of Mormon, there's not one word of prophecy. Just decide. That's for free. So, uh, verse 22 again. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, this is um, Isaiah chapter 7. Behold, um, he's quoting from Isaiah chapter 7. For behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. I want to thank God that we have the presence of God. Every believer, every saint, everyone that puts their faith and hope and trust in Christ has Christ living in them. And in Colossians, it's the hope of glory that lives in us. In Matthew, it's Emmanuel, God with us us if we belong to the creator of everything that exists and we are his heirs we are his children our eternity is secure there's nothing can change that if you're in Christ he's paid the price you come into the good of that. He became, Paul says, 2 Corinthians, he became our sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. When you get a hold of who you are in Christ, when you begin to understand that, what the Bible simply says states clearly, this is not, this is not hyperbole. This is not an exaggeration. It's just simply stated in the Bible. And it's there for our benefit. He didn't have to tell us this. It might be true and he didn't even have to tell us, but it's there for our benefit, for our edification, for our encouragement, for our understanding. If we understand this, what in the world do we have to be afraid of? Are you kidding? What in the world do we have to worry about? Now listen, I understand. Uh, we're still human, okay? I've got my days. I've got my situations. When I'm up to my neck and patience in the ER, when I'm up to my earlobes and patience in the ER, when I'm up to my eyeballs, with patience in the ER, you know, I start to get a little stressed just like everybody else. <laughs> so that's why I have to be reminded continually God is with us. I don't have to worry. 
Christ is me as the hope of glory. I've got, a, I've, got, I've got hope beyond this world, beyond the grave. Tragedy, now listen, again, uh, 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 this is not just pie in the sky, and, and we're, it's not like we're facing, uh, not facing challenges. Every one of us probably knows someone that has died of COVID. Now, it may not be that way in other counties in California. Some people say there's no difference in deaths from 2019 to 2020. No difference. Okay, but that's not the case with us. We have bodies stacking up. I don't want to be graphic, but I'm telling you, we have um, uh, uh, one of the highest rates of COVID, positive COVID uh, cases. I don't want to say tests because positive tests doesn't mean positive cases way down here. But we have positive cases. And, you know, uh, um, COVID is three times as deadly for blacks and Hispanics. This is man-made. I'm just reminding you, man-made virus, three times as deadly for blacks and Hispanics. So, so we have loss, real loss. And the tra to add injury to insult, our hospitals all across this country, our hospitals will not treat COVID appropriately. We have $30 medicines that'll turn COVID around, stop it in its tracks, but we won't use that. We won't use those. Our, our, our FDA and our CDC, they don't want us using those. So we're completely within our, our, our protocols and we don't have to treat people, we just can let them die and get big bucks in reimbursement. We are monetarily incentivizing the death of COVID patients. So there you go. So all of that is going on. So I'm just saying that there's real loss. There's economic loss. There's loss of health. There's loss of life. There are uh, uh, grief. You know, this Christmas, there's going to be people, uh, just as our, uh, uh, I just heard it, you know, repeat. I'm just repeating recently what I heard in our news, and that is there's going to be people missing in their places at the table this Christmas. We have real grief to deal with. But we don't grieve as those with no hope. I know a dear, dear, dear brother that is with the Lord now, used to be a police officer, and he died from COVID. And uh, I think unnecessarily so. Nevertheless, he's with the Lord. And if he had a choice to come back, you think he'd come back? Are you kidding? He's in glory with the Lord. He would never come back. We're the ones with the loss. He's, he's to live as Christ, to die as gain. We act like the Christians in this country, we act like we are scared to death to go to heaven. It's a promotion to live as Christ and to die as gain. So I just want to encourage believers. I know we have a lot to deal with. A lot of grief, a lot of loss. Just remember, <laughs> Emmanuel, God is with us in the midst of this. He's got a good plan for our lives. He knows what he's doing. I pray that this would be a wonderful big reset for the church of God in this world, in this country especially, but for the whole world. This would be a huge reset. And with the grief, you know what? Ask the Lord for help in your grief, in your stress, in your circumstances, in your situation. God is with us. Christ in us is the hope of glory, but God is with us. And he can help us. And even if you die, even if I was to get COVID and die, that's gain. I can't lose. Do you get that? It's Thanksgiving every day. It's Merry Christmas every day because God is with us, Emmanuel. So that's the message for believers. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, that's a whole different subject. Please think about this. This is why the entire Christian world celebrates this time of year we call Christmas because he was born on a specific day. You can believe it. 
Uh, that's what the <laughs> that's what the angels came to these shepherds and said, uh, "Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all people." Well, what's the good news? That unto you is born this day, the Christ's birthday. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Messiah the Lord, the Savior of the world, the Lord. God, the God, the, the God that made everything that you see. He was actually, he became, we say, incarnation. God became a man. And he came here to save sinners like me and you. And if you don't know him, you simply put your faith and trust in him and you turn away from the world. It's a package deal. You simply put your faith and trust in him. You say you're sorry for your sins. You ask him to come into your heart, your life. You give your life to him just like that. You're saved and you're headed for heaven. Your eternal destiny can be changed that fast. That's the kind of savior we have. That's the kind of gospel, the good news that we have. This can all change for you. Don't wait another day. Don't, don't wait for things to get better. Don't put your faith and hope in the economy or, the, or, or a vaccine. No, turn to Christ now. That's the, he is indeed the Savior. So I want to encourage the saints. God is with us. And those of you that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you can have joy. You can have a, a, a joy unspeakable, peace that is uh, uh, unthinkable, and you can have love that just, there's no end, unending in you from God right now. So um, God bless you as, as we celebrate this Christmas unlike any other Christmas in our lifetime. And that God would use these circumstances to help you to reset, rethink, refocus your eyes on him, on Christ, and to, <laughs> to see how, how blessed, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got nothing to fear, everything to be thankful for in the midst of the suffering and the grief that we share. It's Thanksgiving every day. It's Merry Christmas every day. It's Christ. It's God with us, Emmanuel. So God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Turn to Christ. Every one of us. That's the answer for all of our life problems. Saved or unsaved, turn to Christ. He can help. God bless you.